Hello, welcome. Today is Friday the 29th of October. Today we'll go through a few US stocks in no particular order. We'll start with Accenture, which has moved to an all-time high in the last week, moved extraordinarily well. If we just zoom back, uh, even when the pandemic hit, it certainly significant a pretty, uh, sorry, suffered a pretty significant fall like almost everything else did. But not only has it regained those losses so quickly, it's just continue to move very, very strongly. The thing I do like about this chart is, you know, it's had a nice little move up, then a retracement and sitting quiet for about a month or so, and then another very strong rally, and then just sort of easing up a little bit over the course of the next month and getting rid of those uh, people who have enjoyed some pretty healthy profits. And then just in the last month, it's continued to move higher again. So just sort of come to a bit of a, a halt in the last few days, just hitting a little bit of short-term resistance there, maybe similar to what we've seen back through here but certainly doing all the right things and moving very, very strongly. Next is Aflac, which has also achieved an all-time high in the last week. However, this paints a very, very different picture because if we look back to you know previous highs uh, only two years ago, significant fall and then the regaining that lost ground. But how this is different to Accenture is the fact that it has hit sort of very similar levels uh, in the last few months and really just failed to break through. So even though it's achieved an all-time high in the last few days, it's probably only done it by one cent. Um, so, you know, a very different picture, as I said, to Accenture. So if we were to look at this a little bit differently, and rather than perhaps waiting for it to break through and then continuing to move higher, we know that this level has been of some significance and played a key role in the price action of this. And sure enough, it has fallen away quite sharply does it have the potential, therefore, to fall back down to these previous lows? Well, that could be a you know, potential profit target for people. You could do the math whether there is enough uh, distance in there for potential reward to risk you know, in your trade setup. But certainly you could see it, couldn't you? You could envisage it perhaps returning back to that previous uh, level where it's been doing back and forth for the last few months. And next is uh, Ameriprise or Ameriprise. Uh, similar to the first stock, you know, it also had the the fall, regained the lost ground pretty quickly, and then it's just continued to move higher. You know, nice move up, a little bit of a retracement, move up high, retracement, and so forth. And just, you know, in the last few weeks, just continuing to move higher. And finding these stocks that achieve all-time highs, you know, way back here, it achieved an all-time high, and then again, and again, and again, and again. And sure enough, in the last week, it's done it yet again. Very easy to think that it won't move much higher, but people have probably been thinking that for the last 18 months, 12 months, and they've been wrong all the time as it just continues to move higher. Another one is Avalon Bay. Uh, moving, you know, and reached an all-time high. And yes, it got back to this sort of pre-pandemic high, and it did meet a bit of resistance at that level. And what, around 230 maybe and, and a little bit more, 232, met some resistance, ran up again, met some resistance, and again in the last few weeks hit resistance at that level quite a few times and has just broken through in the last few days to achieve that all-time high. So potentially it could retrace and come back and retest that level, but certainly some positive signs to have broken through that level finally um, after having traded sideways for quite a few months. Uh, Cincinnati Financial. So this is similar to Aflac in that it's, uh, you know, achieved a sort of high several months ago and since that time has traded back and forth in a range. So even though it's achieved an all-time high in the last 24 hours, who's to say it doesn't again sort of meet a wall of resistance and a wall of selling and just come off again? And potentially, if again, if you can picture this back down to this sort of 113 level, a lot of support through that level there and again more recently and again we could envisage if it was to fail to break through and maintain that break for it to trade back down again and people would do the math do the reward to risk uh, calculations and determine whether that's a suitable trade for them to perhaps trade back down to that support level down at 113. another one is hilton well-known brand uh, its retracement and sideways trading happened earlier in the year and across the six months in the middle of the year. And now, more recently, it's just started to move higher. And again, it has also achieved an all-time high. In a similar vein, uh, Marriott also trading a bit sideways, maybe a little bit down here, all-time high here, uh, and has just recently broken through that. But interestingly enough, 
you know, with this high, it's met resistance here on several occasions in the last month or so, moved up again in the last 48 hours. And this is a classic doji candlestick where you have the open and the close right in the middle of the range of that uh, particular candlestick, showing a lot of indecision. Uh, it's, a, it's a classic reversal signal. So certainly seeing that, I'm not convinced that it's about to break through and move, can, you know, continue to move higher. It is at that resistance level. Again, this is one that may just fail to maintain that break and keep pushing higher, like potentially some of the other ones we've seen. If we just go to the uh, opposite end of the scale, we've looked at Walt Disney before uh, hitting this support level at 168 and doing so repeatedly. And again, just in the last week or so, continuing to put pressure on that level and being sold down to that level. And there's clearly a lot of support, a lot of demand there holding it up. But potentially, if it was to break through that, uh, like we've seen with a lot of others, potentially breaking through that, retest that, that support level then reverses rolls and all of a sudden now is a level of resistance applying a lot of selling pressure downwards and a lot of glut of supply, keeping a lid on potential rallies and moving back above that level. So uh, certainly applying a lot of pressure to that support level, the black line, almost as if that black line is visible to so many people and they're being influenced by seeing that line. T and T, we've identified a key level, a level that supported the stock well, you know, pushed it back up again and retesting that level in the last few months, just drifting lower, drifting lower and coming back down to that level, identifying, you know, and observing what happens at that level, fell through quite strongly, rallied back up, met some resistance, rallied up again, met some resistance and is struggling to regain that ground. So again, any potential support seen at that level, now that it's been broken, it has tried to retest and move back up to that level. That level is now potentially providing some resistance and some selling pressure, keeping a lid on any rallies back above that level. So we could see a lot of potential downside uh, with this and continuing to move lower. It is trading in a multi-year low. Uh, there's a reason why stocks trade at a multi-year low, and that's because a lot of people don't want them. We could argue for a long time on why that's the case, but that is the case that a lot of people are prepared to sell and offload uh, their stock. And finally, SX property. Uh, we're going to reverse again now and look at something moving very, very well. So just move to all-time highs in uh, in the last week or so, last day or so. We've seen this level of resistance here. You know, that this is the previous high. Rally back up again, hit that previous high around 330, maybe in a bit more than that. It's moved back up. I'll just draw a line in there for all of us to have a bit of a look at. So right around, it's probably a bit more than 330, but I'll draw it in there just roughly right around there. So moving up to that level again, and there's a lot of shadows pointing up against, but it gets sold off, comes back up again. Did actually poke a head, it hit its head above that level, but got sold off again. Look at the number of times it's rallied up to that level and just failed to break through, failed to break through, being sold off at that level. It's had another run here, great doji candlestick there, followed by another one representing indecision, gets sold off a little bit, and finally it's been able to break through and make a push above that. So we could easily see this, just retracing a little bit back to that range around that 330, 335 level, meeting some support at that level and potentially forming a new base and continuing to move higher, unlike some of the others that have just sort of uh, remain below that sort of key level and been unable to sustain that break through there. What's it uh, for today? Just a run through of some US stocks. I hope that's been of some use to you and we look forward to talking to you again soon.